Hello, good evening, and welcome to the finish line. This is the hub for all the previews and reviews and all the action of Champs 2021. Thank you very much for joining us on Television Jamaica's official YouTube channel. 2020 proved to be a challenging year with no action on the track and in the field as well. But in 2021, we have all the action. And on this show, we're going to be breaking down the events and the chances of each school heading into these grueling five days of competition. I'm your host, Simon Preston, and we are joined by two esteemed analysts for this series. We'll be on every single day throughout the course of the championship. Our first analyst we'll be introducing this evening is none other than writer, coach, and analyst Raymond Casey Graham. Good evening, Simon, and I'm, I'm very happy to be on your program. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Coach. And we're also joined by writer, analyst, and reporter of the Jamaica Gleaner Company, Akina Ming. Akina, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Simon, and I'm really enjoying these champions. Yeah, it's a pleasure to, to have you both on to discuss uh, track and field action. As we know, it is five grueling days of competition, yes, and we, can, we always hear uh, comments viewers coming in also on our youtube channel as well keep them coming in throughout the course of the five days any questions you may have for analysts do let us know as well and we'll keep you up to date as it relates to the latest point standings as we had 16 finals today 10 on the girls side and also six on the boys side before we actually look at the different events that happened on today's action Coach uh, Casey Graham, let me come to you first. We didn't have champs in 2020. The last event we actually saw at champs in 2019, we saw Excelsior leading with their four by 400 meter team with Devante Archer to, to glory in that, that, that open relay. How does it feel to see ar arguably the greatest uh, high school track and field championship back on the island? Um, I'm happy for the kids. I know they, have, they train very hard and most of them depend on this for their future. And um, when I heard at one stage that they, it's like, like there could be no championship, I was worried for them because, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to know that they have been training so hard for nine, ten, nine months and, and, and can't compete. So I'm happy as a person who, who was involved as a coach, and as a person who loves the sport, I'm happy to, to see track and field because this is my favorite um, sport. So I'm happy also for the coaches because um, most of them, um, they spend night and day um, making a lot of sacrifices. And I'm happy that it's a, it's a truncated one, but nevertheless, this is for this, the athletes. So I'm happy that something is going on. Indeed, and for Akina, for you, how does it feel as well, not only in the, in the sense of an analyst, but also a writer, a reporter, to have some track and field coverage to report on? It's also, uh, it's always good to have track and field back. I mean, uh, for the development of the sport in Jamaica, and um, more importantly, for the student athletes who are trying to matriculate or will be matriculated to university. As we know, Champs is one of those events that um, scouts from America, um, whether, they, whether they tuned in via the internet or um, sometimes they come down here themselves to recruit athletes. It's very good for these student athletes to have an opportunity to um, showcase their talents so that they can matriculate. All right, and yes, our technical team will advise us as well when we'll have the footage to analyze a couple of the races that we can have on our screen and actually break down the events. But before that, gentlemen, we had 16 finals today, as I mentioned earlier, 85 in total throughout the course of the five days. So we've essentially covered 19% or almost one fifth of all mm -hmm. the races. Aquino, starting with you. On a Tuesday, normally we'll be starting to build some momentum, but to have 16 finals, we're already bringing out the pen, the papers, the calculators. How did it feel for you? Um, I think it's interesting. I mean, because we're actually seeing the championship shape on, on the first day, which is, is not something that we would normally see um, pre-COVID. But um, I think um, Jamaica College really looked to be in good shape. Kingston College had a wonderful day. Um, they had some casualties and that comes um, championship. Um, but, but I'm expecting Casey to fight until the end. But um, for me, the most important performance of, on the day was Shanti Foreman um, mm -hmm. of San Diego, the class one girls in the high jump. She um, scored to 1.84 meters in the class one. And, and, and the reason why this performance 
stand out more than any other. Um, even though we had a record on the name with um, her, Hawkins, was we call Shante, it was um, actually, um, she won all the, the high jump in all four classes. And I think that that is um, showing her, her, her class um, for a long time. Is longevity is really important. important. I think that was interesting. Yes, a supremely talented young lady indeed, not only right now at San Diego, but also from her time at Excelsior as well. Uh, Coach Graham, we're going to come to you quite shortly, but before that, what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the, the steeplechase, the 2,000 meter steeplechase for girls open that we saw the first race of action this morning at nine o'clock and afterwards, we're going to break down that event and others from Champs Day One Action of 2021. 100 meters to go now, Samantha Price of Homo Technical. Looking good, large and in charge. Almost had a problem on that last hurdle. Samantha Price of Homo Technical has this one sewn up in the bag. In fabulous style, she lands the first gold medal at Champs 2021, 7.04.43, the flash time for the girls' 2,000 meters. Steeplechase Open Final, 7.07.43. The record is safe. And Edwin Allen's uh, Sonia Gibson comes in second. So that was Samantha Price of Homo Technical. Seven minutes, 07.12 seconds. Nine precious points for Homo Technical in the bag. Coach Graham, your thoughts about uh, Samantha's performance in this race? Was she expected to, to go on and, and win this title? She certainly had competition early on. She kept her composure. There was some competition from Gibson of Edwin Allen. Your thoughts about the execution? Okay. Um... Samantha Price, she's the most experienced middle distance athlete in that field. But she was not the favorite because over technical, they started their preparation very late. And um, she did not show that from leading of the championship. We well, expected the St. Diego girls to dominate with Edwin Allen. Well, she, she, you know, she caught up on her experience and she did very well because when um, with two laps to go, she just dismantled the field. And it was a convincing win. And it showed the strength of Omud middle distance. And I think this will do Omud good. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that St. Diego, um, um, there are two athletes and did not do that well. I think um, the occasion got to them. But as I said, some of the prize, she has been a champ for a year. She's the most experienced person in the field running that champs. So she just came and she, and she did what she had to do. And um, this is good for the program. Um, she, she, she ran very intelligently. She, at one stage, when St. Joe girl went through, she did not panic. She just stayed behind her and made her move at the right time. Yes, indeed. That was uh, Rochelle Johnson of St. Jago High finishing third, seven minutes, 17.70. You know, Aquino, Samantha Price was in, interviewed shortly after this race, and she spoke about the, the preparation that she had, and it was quite lackluster, a bit of indecision. Mm -hmm. Was champs going to take place? Was it not going to take place? You know, for an athlete, you know, it must have been a lot of indecision, frustration, and for her to come out with a performance, a victory, a gold medal, and nine points in the bag, it certainly must be relief on her part. Definitely, and it, it also um, shows our mental fortitude. I mean, to have a season like this where it's kind of topsy-turvy, one minute champs is on, one minute it's off, one minute you're training, the next minute you're not. And also um, for the coaches as well, to, to get an athlete ready for a championship like this. By now, I mean, you were preparing for a championship in March, and now it's in May. Um, it's, it certainly would have been a difficult thing. And so it's important that um, athletes enjoy each championship because it, it's really an opportunity for them to um, put some time down and, and keep it going. Indeed. So that was Samantha Price, Homo Technical, 7 minutes, 07.12. We're going to look at the boys' equivalent now, the boys' 2,000-meter steeplechase. Perhaps a, a surprise here, Rivalda Marshall, quite a veteran in this event. Second 2018, won it 2019. We all know the pandemic broke out in 2020 on the island. 2021, what happened? Well, let's see if that race is ready for us, and let's see the battle between Kingston College and Calabar and how that panned out. It's the final barrier. The record is 12 seconds away. Rivaldo Marshall from Kirk Dawkins. Looks like they will come back to the finish in that order. Oh, no. Or will they? Oh, Dawkins digs deep. Find something extra. Kirk Dawkins of Kingston College lands the boys. 
2,000 meters steeplechase open 552 99 the record stays intact Marshall takes silver and for a brief moment Marshall looked as if he had the gold in the bag but Dawkins really dug into his bag of reserves hold him in and uh, turned the table the scoreboard is showing it as Atawatsi as opposed to Dawkins that's Kirk Dawkins of Kingston College, 5 minutes 52.74, erasing the mark of 5 minutes 53.14 from Felicio Green of San Diego back in 2016. Coach Graham, did you see Kirk Dawkins having that, that late burst of gas and energy to be able to motor him over that line and those nine precious points in the bag? Yes, Simon. He, you said earlier, it's, it's a surprise result. Although um, Marshall won in 2019, Dawkins has been the best steeple chase athlete this season. And both of them, it was a good race, and you have to give them a lot of credit because when you have a, somebody like a um, Calabar young man in front there, he has been way above at least in the flat event. And he showed the Kingston College fight there because some people would have given up to see a marshal in front, but he fought gallantly in the end and um, to maintain his unbeaten run. He was the best person coming despite the name that Marshall had 2019, but he was the best person. He has not lost in a race. He had the best time. And all three athletes, um, they did their, their personal best today. You must come with the, um, the, Saint, the Jamaica College athlete, so he, he did personal best. So it was a good race. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. No spectators were there, but I really enjoyed that race with two athletes battling out for top honor, especially two schools. Kingston College and Calabar, the usual rivalry. Indeed. Aquino, uh, Kingston College first and seventh in this race. Atoguatsi coming seventh and Calabar second and sixth. When you add up all of the points together, that's 11 points for this race for Casey and 10 for Calabar. And as the races keep coming, you start to, this Kingston College starts to build their gap. And as we look at the points later, we'll be able to see that, that gap and, and where it is at this point in time. How precious was this to start off the morning for the Purple and White team? Very important. I think it, it kind of set the pace for the championship for Casey. Um, uh, we have seen um, throughout the day that they have gone on to score um, um, some double-digit points in events in, in some of these finals. And, and so I think that was important. They had a few casualties, of course. We're going to talk about those later. But um, definitely, I think they, they really set, set the tone. Interestingly, though, I think what could, be, what could have been a factor in this race was that um, was also the pandemic. And we see where um, Marshall was leading and, and his legs almost gave way in the last um, 30, 40 meters of the race. Um, you, you know, you would have been preparing for a championship in March and now we're in May. So that might have been a factor as well. Mm -hmm. And Simon. Yes, go ahead, coach. Um, you see the underscore here. They were favored to come one, three. Uh, that's 15 points and um, because they are their second string athlete um the african athlete he, he he had a problem with his ankle during the race and he fell back at the bottom on the other hand jamaica college they overscored here so kc lost four at least four points here while jamaica college gained at least two points here Quite interesting. Matthew Gordon of Jamaica College, 6 minutes, 0 0.80. That's six points for, for JC right there. And before we actually get into the, the hurdles and look through a couple of those races, Akino, you were speaking a bit earlier about Shanti Foreman and the form that she was in. How impressed were you by her performances today in the Class 1 girls high jump? I'm really impressed. I've, I've been impressed um, by this young lady from, she was in Class 3. She has, um, you know, I mean, she she's really tall and her technique is 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 really good as well um but i mean to learn of her story what she had to endure this season with the pandemic she lives in saint thomas a, a community by the name of her team and her coach um gavin james um said that he has to travel to saint thomas um regularly in order to get her motor and, and uh, it, it was a really good performance um, and I think she's one for the few. 
Wonderful, one, one, wonderful there. Shante Foreman winning at, in at different classes throughout the course of the championships. We're going to have a look at some of the hurdles races that we had throughout the course of today. We're going to first start with the girls, I believe the class one girls, 100 meters, and then we'll look at the 110 meter hurdles for boys and that final. Stopped, so it's now Tajay Francis of Casey who has the ascendancy. It's going to be purple and white of Kingston College. Tajay Francis of Casey gets the win against all the odds. Say to you that his heat looked untidy. Yes, that, that was the audio from the, the 110 meter hurdles. Tajay Francis there of Kingston College continuing their tradition from 2019 where they had Wayne Pinnock go on and, and get that record. Coach Graham, I just want to start with you here with the, 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 the men's, the, the boys hurdles in the 110 meter hurdles. We saw the record go essentially every year and this was the, the year where it, it wasn't broken. We saw previously with the young man, Dejour Russell and the, how he did 2017, 2018 and Wayne Pinnock really breaking that trend of of black and green and now purple and white now to jay francis carrying on the tradition of kc yeah um it's very unfortunate that i think um the best person um coming to the championship vashan vassian of kingston college from of san diego the class two record holder um last year he was on part of another outstanding race um with with um i think with pinock but um he got injured today we saw him today we have not seen him all season and i i have some concern because if you are a top earler and you, you only want run one race for the season, you are in trouble. I feel like he was hurt because you can, um, Akina will tell you that. You can't be an earler. It's a rhythm, rhythm event. You need to run consistently. And he has only competed once. So I knew there was some problem. So when I saw him at the start of the race, I was worried. I knew something was wrong. And he, 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 he came to the championship as he ran 13.23 um, in his only race. He's better than the, class, than the field. But, um, um, Francis, he has been doing hurdles a long time. Um, I must say it here, I, I actually started him doing hurdles when I was at Casey. He's a long, he's a long jumper, too, triple jumper, and he has improved. When I saw his time at the various meet running 10.38, he has not become the fastest person at Kingston College based on the meets where he has been to. So, no surprise here. He has been early, doing early from his first year in class three. And um, I'm disappointed though, the field was watered down in the final, a false start, and four did not finish. But you can't take away a medal from he's he's a champion. And whether you have three or four, as long as you pass the tape first, you are the champion. And that is good. Kingston College, this is their bread and butter. Um, no other school has dominated early like Kingston College. It doesn't matter who is their coach, they are going to dominate. That is something that they, they strive on. So Casey needed, needed these points because today was sent, was there strongly in the, in the sixth final. JC week, today's JC week there. Eh? Once the early is out of the way. Um, JC will smile because, um, and they score some points. So I'm kind of surprised that JC scored so many points despite their matinee, matinee not running. So I think it was a good day for JC in hurdles despite not scoring as much points as Kingston College. Yes, Jaheem Stern finishing second of JC. They're 13 78, seven points for them. And Rajay Reed of Excelsior. 15.25 for six points there. Aquino, as you know, there wasn't no Neil Matthew Sutherland of JC. We didn't have Vashon Vassiana as well. Quite underwhelming, you think, for the 110 final for class one boys? Yeah, kind of, kind of. But, um, you know, these are championships and things will happen. Um, and so it, it, we, are, we have to commend Tajay Francis for, you know, and, and delivering the gold medal for KC and um, claiming nine points. I mean, I mean, Casey would have been looking for um, a score in double digits in this event, but it didn't happen. Um, but for him to rebound after what happened to Vassiana and win the gold medal, I think that was commendable. Yeah, quite shortly we'll be able to bring up the, the, the girls' equivalent in terms of the class one girls' 100 meter hurdles. But firstly, uh, Coach Graham, we, we understand that, you know, hamstring is, is an issue amongst many sprint hurdlers and not only on the girls side but on the boys side as well is it about the overwork is it about you know the decision making of the athletes and their trail legs what would cause some of these challenges that we often find with these athletes especially when it comes to champs time yeah the technique you know is very important once you um you hit that hurdle there's a serious problem this is a race you can't make any mistake and most of you have these injury problems because of not um doing the right technique um it's in a hurdle can throw you out. So, and again, you know, it's um, you think about a barrier sometimes, 
it's in the mind sometimes you are very anxious to get to over the hurdle and that can cause you to to um, reach reach too early for for, for 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 the barrier and that can cause a problem here all right, I understand there. And let us have a look at the class one girls 100 meter final, and then we'll recap the, the winner of that race and how the point standings will look, especially on the girls' side of things. So it was Onika Wilson of Heidel High. She was the one that claimed this title 13.60, nine precious points for. Heidel Marissa Simpson of Clarendon College was second, 13.70. Patrice Clark of Edwin Allen, third, 13.81. And Salisi Miles of Rossiz, who we saw that was so impressive at the, the, the Central Eastern Championships. Eastern Championships. Eastern Championships, uh, 13.87 for, for Miles there. Gabriel Matthews, you know, we remember from Heidel now at the Queen's School there, finishing fifth. Aquino, uh, Wilson of Heidel claiming that, 13.60. Heidel, could they challenge Edwin Allen this year, you feel? Um, no, I don't think so. But um, um, I think it was a very interesting race. I mean, and for her personal, she was emotional at the end. Emotional at the end. But um, Idel have been picking up some points in the hurdles, and that's that's good. I mean, we saw in 2019, and um, they gathered a lot of points, and they were they they made a good run in the end. But um, I think Edwin Allen will be too strong for them. Coach, how do you feel the, the competition is heating up on the girls' side? San Diego has certainly left a stamp to their authority on day one, followed by Heidel, Edwin Allen, some work to do. How do you see the girls' side shaping up over the next four days? Um, based on my prediction, I'm bang on target. I had San Diego to lead with 89 points, they're on, they're on 81. I had, I had Heidel to be second in 75, they're on 76. I had Edwin Allen to be in third and 73, they're on 71. And we must be fourth and 19. They have 21. So I'm back on target. Um, St. Diego could have scored more, but they had a lot of this up today. Um, Edwin Allen, tomorrow we have four finals. Edwin Allen will take our lead tomorrow. Their middle distance team is powerful. So it's like Jason and the boys' side. Um, you have to give Idel credit. Um, Corey Bennett, um, they have been dominating her all the years. When you look at the results today, it was an idle show in hurdle. Um, I do not think either Idol or St. Diego, they do not have the depth to beat um, an, an Edinburgh team. As I said earlier, um, the middle distance events, Edinburgh Allen, they can win all the middle distance events in all the classes. So I expect them to, as of tomorrow and, and, and the third day, they should take, they should go in front and keep moving away. Um, for any team to beat Edwin Allen, they need to get um, improved in that year. St. Diego has improved because over the years, past two years, they have not done well. Two years ago, I see them coming into, into their own now, but um, they are short in other years. And they are, very, they are very unfortunate. They lost three young ladies this year. Um, Brianna, Brianna. Liston. Liston went to Heidel, they lost um, Crystal Marsno. And when you see in a class one, St. Diego always dominated in class one. This year they had nobody in class one because they lost two of their earlers who should have been back in school. If those two girls were back in school along with Liston, we, we would be saying something different now. You look at at least 45, 50 points, they would have been a favorite. So I think Edwin Allen, um, based on their middle distance and and the strength of their class four team this year, they are very strong in class four. They are going to overcome both Idel and and um and San Diego and win the championship for seven years in a row and eight overall. So Coach Graham gave us uh, the top five ascents in in terms of the point standing on the girls' side: San Diego eighty one, Heidel seventy six, Edwin Allen seventy one, Wilmers girls in fourth with twenty one points, Homewood Technical in fifth with seventeen, Excelsior in sixth position sixteen and a half points, St Catherine High with fourteen points, Very Technical with eleven points, Alpha with nine and a half, and running out the top ten, St Elizabeth Technical with seven 
points. All right, gentlemen, within the last five minutes of the show, what we're going to do, we're going to slightly preview what is ahead to come tomorrow. We have five finals tomorrow, four on the girls' side and one on the boys' side. On the girls' side, we have the long jump for class four girls. We also have the shot put for class one girls. In addition to that, we have the girls' class two high jump final. And we also have the discus throw for class two girls. And the final on the boys' side will be the long jump for class two boys. And in addition to those five finals, gentlemen, Akina, I'm going to start with you. We have the preliminaries for the 100 meters and the one lap event at the 400 meters. Akina, what catches your eye heading into Wednesday's second day of action? Well, I mean, as you mentioned about the one lap event, I've got on my arm, Mark Anthony Miller. I'm, I'm looking forward to him running. He has ran 48.0. Eight seconds already this season, and he's a first year class two athlete. It's really impressive. Um, he was comfortable in the first round in the 200 meters today, and so I'm looking forward to, to see what he will come to. So I'm, I'm most forward, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Coach Graham, who stands out for you going into tomorrow's second day of action, and which event for you, even the hurdle, the, okay. the, the relays as well? Uh, tomorrow. We are going to see the first record of the championship. Okay. The girls' we'll class two discus. There's a young lady out of Oban Technical by the name of Cedrica Williams. The record in the class two discus, she's the class three record holder. She's the character games and a 17 record holder. She was born in 2019. The record is 4666 by Marie Fabla here. She has been showing 51 consistently. She will break the record. So I think the class two discus will be. The event tomorrow to see the first record. Also, I'm looking forward um, to the high jump class two girls, Anishka McDonald. She has won in class four. She came third in class three, one behind um, Shante Foreman. We know who Shante Foreman is. And she won in class three. She will be going for her third victory in a row at the championship. Also, is, is William. So I think, um, and you look at um, the shot put. Class one, San Diego Kayla Davis. She she wanted to make up for what she did today in the um in the shot put. In the, um, so I think um tomorrow we will see an adrenaline team scoring a lot of points. They will take they will score over 70 odd points tomorrow. They will take the lead. And um and San Diego, they will still score um some crucial points, but they will be there at adrenaline and they won't be passed until until um, the championship will be next year. So I'm um, all the boys, just one final. Um, yeah. Long jump class, two boys. I think Kingston College will, will, will get some more points and stretch their lead, but not enough to all of uh, and Jamaica College team who on Thursday will be coming in with their 1500 meters at least. And I think they will come Quinella in those events and, and cut the gap. And Casey. All right, as it stands right now, after six events for the boys, it's Kingston College, 55 points, followed by Calabar, 24 points behind with 31. San Diego High in third with 31 points. You could say level with Calabar there. St. Elizabeth Technical in fourth position, 26 points. Jamaica College in fifth right now, 24 points. As Coach Graham says, look out for them coming into day three. They'll be one to look out for. Woolmers Boys, seven points. Edwin Allen, seven. Belfield with six. Excelsior also with six points. Cornwall College with four points. Clarendon College with three. Veer Technical with two. And Oberlin High with one point. Those are the 13 schools on the boys' side that have so far registered points so far for the championships. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Really, really appreciate your insight into day one action. We look forward to do this this time tomorrow evening to break down day two action. Will there be any changes in the point standings? Will Will Heidel High continue to to and San Diego continue to strut their stuff? Will there be changs? Well, yeah, there only changes. time will tell to see if there'll be them. changes. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I'm going to go in front tomorrow, and San Diego will be in second semi and third. So Ed Allen will take out the lead tomorrow. But for the boys. Kick with one final, KC remains in front, and Calabar will stay there. And Jamaica College, they will have to wait until the third day before they cut into that lead. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Really, really appreciate it. For those tuning in on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. On behalf of Akino, Raymond, and myself, Simon Preston, 
pleasant viewing and we'll see you again tomorrow at 6 p.m for another show just like this